Today we're going to show you how to install C9 perimeter lighting around the outside edge of a residential home. C9 lighting is the cornerstone of many lighting projects. In fact, it's the number one type of install professional Christmas installers do. They'll charge anywhere from $4 to $10 per foot. So it is a more expensive type of install, but the great thing is it's super easy to do. It does not require experience or any kind of specialized skills. We're going to show you that today. If you haven't subscribed to us on YouTube, please do so. If you like our video, give us a thumbs up to let YouTube know that you do like it and they'll push us up to the top of the list. All right, let's get started. Two things to always remember when installing Christmas lights. First and foremost is safety. Make sure you got a good quality ladder. You know how to use it and you're staying safe. A lot of injuries and fatalities happen every year from people getting in situations they shouldn't be in. If you're uncomfortable on ladders, find somebody to help you out that does have experience or hire a professional installer. Number two, always, always, always buy truly professional grade Christmas lights and decorations. Don't buy your Christmas lights from the same store you buy your toilet paper from. That's not where the pros buy. Buy from places such as us here at Christmas Designers. We supply several thousand pro installers per year, and we also sell to businesses and residential customers. If you don't wanna buy from us, no problem, but find someone that does sell to the pro industry. All right, let's take a look at what materials we're gonna be using today. The cornerstone of any perimeter lighting project is the light line itself. Today we're going to be using bulk light line. That comes in 100 foot, 250 foot, 500 foot, or 1,000 foot spools. What's great about bulk light line, you cut it to any length you want, put your male and female on, it gives you that truly customized look. Now, for spacing, it can come anywhere from 4 inch all the way up to 36 inch. For perimeter, we generally recommend somewhere between 9 inch and 15 inch. If the budget's tight, you can push it up to 15 inch. If you have the budget, go all the way down to 9 inch. It looks fantastic. For today, we're going to be right in the middle at 12 inch spacing. For bulbs, we're going to be using a Pro Christmas bulb. It is the top selling bulb on the market. Two brands, if you're, you either want to use Pro Christmas or Minleon, stick to one of those two brands and you can't go wrong. There is a lot of cheap bad quality bulbs out there, so stick to Minley Honor Pro Christmas. Now, the empty socket light line with C9 should not be confused with C9 stringer sets. This is a truly pro-grade C9 stringer set, but it is not made for perimeter lighting. It is made for foliage lighting, such as in the canopy of trees, on hedges. You don't want to use it on perimeter. So use empty socket light line with C9 retrofit or C7 retrofit bulbs. We're going to be using 18.2 SPT1 zip cord. What zip cord is great about, it allows you to customize your extension cord so you have nice clean extensions, not too long, not too short. You cut it to length, add your males and females. We have our male vampires, female vampires. We're gonna have our timer so that we can control when the lights come on and off and an extension cord. Now, when it comes to clips, there are so many clips on the market, it can be a little overwhelming. A lot of suppliers carry a lot of different clips because everybody does have their favorite. What we're going to be showing you today is called a flex clip. What we like about the flex clip, the clip itself stays on the socket and the bulb locks it in place. So when you're pulling your lights down after the season, you're not having to worry about several clips hanging from the roof. You can leave, leave the clips on the lights you're in storage, next year you pop them back out, all the clips are ready to go. So this is one of our favorite styles of clips. They're called circular clips. There's a number of them on the market, but today we will be using the flex clip. All right, now we're ready to bulb up our line. We're gonna take the clip, put it on the socket, take the bulb, and that will lock the clip in. It's okay that there is movement, and there is supposed to be movement to allow you more flexibility during install. So we're gonna do this on each one of the sockets. All right, before installing the lights, we're gonna locate our power. For this application, the power is actually at the front entrance between the arches that we're gonna be gluing the lights onto. So it's gonna work perfect. We're gonna go from that outlet to the arches and then from the arches to the rest of the house. So it all comes from a single power source. Because we're at 250 feet or under, typical rule is that 250 feet or 200 bulbs, whichever comes first is as much as you can put on a single line. We're under that so we can come from a single plug. We're ready to attach the clips to the gutter. It's as simple as clipping it right onto the metal facing of the gutter. Work down from socket to socket, not pulling the cord too tight. You also don't want to leave too much slack or your spacing is going to get off. Make small adjustments as you work your way down. Okay, in this section, we're transitioning from a gutter to shingles. A lot of people stress about the bulb orientation because your orientation is going to change from uh, vertical to horizontal. But at night, when the lights are lit up, you will not notice any difference. So don't stress about that orientation change. If you've got a little too much slack, you can hide it in the gutter as you make that transition. And we're gonna just work our way down the shingles.
All right, now we are done with this section of lower roof line. It transitions into a higher roof line. You're gonna run into this situation from time to time, and there's three ways that you can handle this. First, you can actually cut the cord and use a small zip cord going from the lower to the upper section. I'm not a big fan of that in a lot of situations because you're adding additional connections. Every time you add a male-female connection, you have one more possible failure point. The second option is to cap the sockets with a socket cap cover. We use that for years. It's not as clean of a look because you have empty sockets that are hanging with a cap on it. You also have a situation where moisture can get into that socket and that can cause GFI issues and it can't dry out because that cap is on there, but you still have wheat holes in the bottom of the socket that allow moisture in. So the third option, which is what we prefer, is to use a mallet and tap the socket off, breaking it off. You're gonna have a couple of pinholes there and you'll just wrap electrical tape around that to seal those two holes up. Now in this area, we do have an outlet under the soffit that we could have used for this upper perimeter line, but I'd rather just use a single power source, the one near the front door. That way everything is going to be on the same timer. Everything turns on at the same time, turns off at the same time. When you use multiple outlets, your timing may be a little off, so part of your perimeter is on a minute or two minutes before the other part. Now if it's a really big project, you have no choice but to use multiple outlets, but this one's small enough we can get away with just one outlet. Okay, we are on the last peak of the house. One thing that is important to do when you hit a peak is to try to get a bulb right at the center of that peak. It's gonna give you a much more balanced look than having the bulb on the peak offset. So sometimes you're gonna have to add a little extra slack as you head up to the peak. But once you place that top one and you start going down the other side, if you place it correctly, then each side of the peak should line up as far as the bulbs and give you that nice refined look. All right, we're nearing the end of the run of gutter. We're gonna put the final few bulbs on. And everything is done except for the entrance arch and we'll move to that next. Okay, in this area, we're gonna be using hot glue. Hot glue works fantastic on applications such as brick, stone, unpainted concrete. Where you don't wanna use it is on painted surfaces. It can pop the paint off or on stucco. A lot of stucco is backed by a styrofoam material, so you'll actually melt that styrofoam, causing damage to the stucco. Today, we're gonna to be using a battery-operated cordless glue gun, but if you don't have one of those, you can use a standard corded glue gun. All right, let's get started gluing the sockets onto the arch. All right, to attach the bulb, we're gonna take the hot glue gun, not touching the tip to the socket, but just having the glue applied to the base of the socket. Then we're going to hold it on until it dries, which is typically just a few seconds, depending on how hot or cold it is outside. And then we move on to the next socket. Now all the lights are installed, we're ready to start working on getting power to all of the sections of the house. The power is closest to the arch, so we're gonna feed power into the arch. It's gonna go up and then where it connects into the upper perimeter, we're gonna put an inline female and a male connection, and then that's gonna power the rest of the house. Again, you wanna stay under 250 bulbs, not go over that limit. If you do go over that, you do need to find another plug to plug into. It can be the same outlet, but just not the same plug. Okay, we're gonna start off with our male for our power source. We're gonna separate the wires with our diagonal cutters. You're gonna locate the wire with the ribbed side. The ribbed side always goes to the wider blade on the plug. So you'll need to look at the pin and the wide blade, see which one it is. Slide the wire down into the chamber that separates the two wires out. Fold it down and you take your back slider and you're gonna slide it into place that penetrates the wire with the pins. If it's difficult to slide, you can use channel locks just to help you slide it in place. And now we have our mill for power. Okay, now we're ready to get power from our arch to the rest of the house. This is where we're gonna use an inline female. There's two types of females that you can use. One is the end of the run female. It basically terminates a run. An uh, inline female can be put anywhere in line and then a male can go into that powering up other sections of your lighting. So in this case, we're using a inline female we're gonna make sure that we align the rib side of the cord with the wider blade on the female. I'm gonna put it in place. We're gonna take our back slider and slide it right on. 
Now we're ready to add our male that'll connect into the inline female. And we can plug that line into our arch to provide power to the rest of our house. Now that we've got power ready to go through the lines, we're gonna add our males and females where they're needed. Sometimes you have to trace your lines down to see exactly if it's a male or female. On a complex job, it can get a little confusing, but if you follow your lines and you can verify which side is the male, which side is the female. In this case, we're at the end of the run, so we're gonna put a female in. Okay, we're ready to get power from the outlet. The outlet is very close to our beginning run on the arch. So all we're gonna do is we've got our timer, it's gonna go into the outlet, and we're gonna use zip cord to run from the timer to the beginning of our arch. We're gonna put a male on one side, female on the other for the zip, and we're gonna have power and we're good to go. That wraps it up for today. As you can see, it's an easy installation. You can make it look professional even the first time you do this type of lighting just by following the steps we outlined in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. And don't forget to check us out at ChristmasDesigners.com. Until next time, keep on lighting.